what is going on YouTube it's dirt track Dave here with another informative dirt late model setup video there we're gonna be talking about the right rear suspension and how it acts and how it performs on your car and how you can kind of tune on it and if you can see here we got this right rear spring it's uh he's in the gas spring off the coil over nut and it's back on the coil over nut craziness just madness going on here when you're in the gas and some heavy conditions so we're gonna explain what's going on there and some more but before we get started if you're not a subscriber, I'd be glad to have you. Appreciate all your views and support. All you got to do is click the icon on the bottom right of your screen. Go to the channel, subscribe, come back, continue watching this awesome video on Dirt Late Mile Right Rear Suspension. All right, here's a simple drawing of your right rear suspension. Now, this is looking in from the right rear tire into the center of the car. You've got your upper rod, your lower rod, your bird cage. Only thing that's missing is the spring. Now, when we'll talk thrust angle, well, what is thrust angle? Thrust angle is simply the force of acceleration of the car on the rear end pushing forward against the forelink bars. You can calculate your thrust angle average by adding the top rod angle and the lower rod angle and dividing that by two. That will give your average thrust angle. Angle values are positive if uphill to the front and negative if downhill to the front. Keep that in mind. Now the help of traction, supers run their fifth coil usually as far forward as they can or won't hold back. For crates, they need steerability, so they run their fifth coil all the way back or one from back. This will also have an effect on the spring coming off the cup. Just note that for future references. When the car gets up like that off the spring, that's what's known as getting on the bars, which means it's now running on the bars because there's enough force to keep the car up off the spring through thrust angle. And when a car does get up on the bars, it tends to have a lot of right rear rotation in the gas. And for heavy situations, that's what you want because it takes a lot of the left rear out of the equation because it's planting it so hard. Now, you don't want that in a slick situation or as the track slicks off because you won't be able to pick up the gas unless there's a cushion or something like that. Now that we've touched some on getting up on the bars and you know steering with the right rear, let's talk about the opposite laying over on the right rear and this is a common problem I see a lot and people struggle with and it's not a comfortable feeling for a driver is laying over on the right rear and it's a pretty easy fix sometimes but uh, we'll go in more detail with it. Having a car lay over on the right rear is usually either from being sprung too softly on the right rear corner or flat tracks really bring it out in a car. If you're on a flat track that's hammered down it'll show hands down every time that you're laying on the right rear too hard and it'll usually follow through the night even as it slicks off you'll still be kind of laying over and toting that left front some other common factors in you know a car laying over on the right rear is having too shallow barring on the right rear so that way when it does roll over the bars are pretty neutral and pointed more straight forward and down than they are up this can make a car tight entering for me the next question would be, why is this happening? And this is where the crew chief comes in. You know, you got to figure out why this is happening. And I usually ask my drivers, how much throttle are you giving the car? Are you, you know, 50%, 75%? How much is your initial throttle pickup? Questions like that to try to piece together the puzzle of a, a car that's not handling properly. So let's start with a car that's too free. It's kind of standing up on the right rear you know it's loose on the throttle and you're having trouble getting the power to the ground or not getting so sideways when you do try to put the power to the ground so we'll work on that first one of the first things I like to ask is what and where what's happening where is it happening when I debrief a driver when he comes in and I say you know, he says it's not handling good or you know something's going on so what's happening and where is it happening all right so my driver tells me that he's entering good but he can't pick up the throttle hard or exit straight he's tailing out real bad so I asked myself what could be causing this car to handle this way and I run a lot of scenarios through my head about car changes another important question to ask is how much brake are you using to enter the corner that can be a telltale sign if the car is too tight and he's shaking it loose, then getting it too sideways. I see that a lot super late models. Guys get the cars too tight. Very important thing you need to do next is always check 
tire temps and pressures after each run. Tire temps tell a story. They tell what tires being used the most, what tires are not being used the most. Is there heavy wheel spin? Are you low on your pressures, too high on your pressures, depending on where hot spots may be on the tire? Also, parts of the puzzle that you can use to make the best educated guesses. So, like for this instance, let's say my right rear tire temps are higher than my left rear tire temps. So, that's telling me my right rear is in the dirt a lot harder than my left rear. So the left rear really ain't doing much. It's more along for the ride than anything else at this point in time, judging by the data that we have been able to gather so far. So now we're at the big decision. What do we do? How do we fix this issue that we have at hand before the next session? So you can do a few different things. You can either add some rebound in to keep it from standing up or you can take some rounds out of the right side never do just one corner always do rounds on one side on you know always that's a good rule of thumb to go by but if you're bottoming out already on the right front or something you can't do that so that eliminates that adjustment and you have to look elsewhere to tune your, your machine to get the most performance out of it I've put these in order of best likely adjustment to the worst likely adjustment so if you can take rounds out of the right side and you're not bottoming out that is your best bet because you're taking a little bit of bar angle out without making a full adjustment three-quarter hole is the smallest hole that are on most cars nowadays so one hole is way too much even at three quarters of an inch so rounds out of the right side is the best way to go as long as you're not digging the skid plate into the mud. And if you got the option to run a wide right rear NRM tire, that's always a good option to kind of tighten up the car too. You will still have some, you know, like right rear drive because the tire is wider, but you're less likely to tail off. So you kind of got to compensate with a little bit of left rear dig at the same time if you do a right rear tire. Now, if you shorten the right rear rods, you'll be tighter everywhere. I mean, a quarter inch is a pretty fair adjustment. Um, if you really need to tighten up, if you think track changes are, you know, going fast and you need to keep up with the track, that's a pretty decent adjustment. But half an inch max, three quarters on the tightest of slickest bull rings. And you got to keep in mind, every action has a reaction. So we're only discussing the right rear corner when normally we would be making a couple of other adjustments also to help aid in the car and its performance but that's at a later time right now we're just doing one thing at a time explaining everything thoroughly to where everybody can get it and understand it and then there are other videos you can all put them together you know go back and watch and see you know what would be your best you know go to adjustment for you know what your needs or that track specific track So here's a race clip of mine, and this is from Springfield, Missouri, and it had been raining. It was April, I think, and the track was super rough, super heavy, and and I'm very notorious at getting a car that's a little tight in the gas. That's just my philosophy on these cars. It's just something I always do, and I always can take away easier than you can add it, in my opinion. So, you know, like we took a little bit away and uh, ended up having a pretty decent run. And being just a tad throttle tight, when he did pick up the throttle, like if he wasn't rotated fully, he'd kind of try to jump the cushion, and a couple times he did. Of course, you've seen that one car jump the cushion behind him, 
but and when he got the car as the race went on and everything came up temperature and the track kind of cleaned off we really got in our zone and just checked out So we just discussed some ways to kind of tighten up your car and tame down the right rear a little bit. So let's jump into if you're laying over on the right rear too hard. Like I said, this is a common problem for a lot of people and they struggle getting that out of the car. And it can usually make a car too tight, you know, enter in, it just rolls over and it's just, it's not a good deal. Bar angle that's less than zero to me, bar angle that's less than three degrees on the lower rod is just too negative because as much as these cars will roll when you initially set them, it takes them so long just to get back up. So five degrees, you know, three to five degrees on the lower and, you know, get up around 18 to 21 on the upper is always a good starting point for any of these late models out. A lot of chassis manufacturers start with very low numbers and even negative and you can end up very tight early on in the night and then find yourself you know mid pack or back of the pack starting to feature with a decent car and that's never fun yeah sorry about the mud on that but at least you can see that it still came off the spring cup, even though it's a crate car. Um, but also notice how flat that upper rod was. Man, that thing was just, it never handled right. It was an old, old school car. You know, it was made to be tight, and GRTs are tight anyway. But uh, for a crate car and that, man, we were always coming up with what I call crutches just to get it to work right. And it, it worked pretty decent, um, but not compared to some of this newer stuff that's come out now. So what do you do when you're in that situation? you got a car that's laying over. You know, first, you got to look at what's causing it. You know, so it can be shallow bar angle, too soft of a spring. You might have some ballast a little too high. Um, that's a problem I've seen before. Um, there's several factors that can call a car, cause a car to lay over too much. Not enough rebound in the left front can do it. Sometimes it'll spring it up. Um, so there's a few things there that'll make a car, you know, lay over on the right rear. So how do you fix it? So once again, I arrange the solutions in <clears throat> chronological order of best choice first to less likely to affect the car last and worst choice last pretty much um, so yeah so I know when I said taking rounds out you need to do the right side evenly but when it comes to the right rear and getting it off the right rear adding rounds to just the right rear is the sole solution because sometimes it's not just about spring pressure or you know shocks or anything like that it's about just getting the right height higher to where you've got the right amount of bar angle and once you do that a lot of them problems will fix themselves because as you add rounds to the right rear it'll kind of transfer to the left front now you will lose some left rear drive doing that but if you're already tight that's not really a, a bad issue you know to, to gain a little steerability and everything because that's what you're fighting when you've got one laid over like that is not turning the way it should so adding rounds and then if that still doesn't work if you're tight on entry especially add some trail to the right rear rods that's always a good help um, and then if you're still having trouble you know staying off the right rear add a little compression take out a little rebound but not too much unless it's rough that helps if it's rough you know doing those two things but uh, that's a good go-to way to get the car off the right rear and like I said, rounds is the way to go. Add rounds, keep adding them till you get up to an inch and a quarter. Um, if you if, it, if that doesn't fix it, and then do the rest. And usually that'll most of the time get you out of trouble unless your car is just way out of whack. This concludes our video on right rear suspension. 
and problem solving, troubleshooting, and go-to things to help you, you know, improve your racing program. I hope you enjoyed this today and you learned something from it. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to my channel for all the content. And my services are always available. All my information is on my channel, also on Facebook and Twitter. Also, follow me on Patreon. Support your local dirt track and your favorite race driver to ensure the health of our sport. And always, drive hard, take chances.